I'm enveloped by a crappy background of planets. Wanna know why? Holes! All right guys, fair warning. It's finals week for me and I have just spent the past 12 hours writing one huge, massive paper on Germanic oratorio spanning from its origins in the 17th century up till the present with some oratorios written about Che Guevara. So my eyes hurt and I feel a little bit like a combination of grumpy cat and depressed cat, if that works as a visual for you. But since listening to me complain about the challenges of collegiate life is not really what you're here for, let's get started on today's topic, which was submitted by Reed Ronander. Pronunciation, I think, is correct. Holst, as you saw from that intro part. Gustav Theodor Holst was a British composer of the decidedly epic variety. He was born in 1874 to a family of a long line of professional musicians, and he was planning on becoming a concert pianist himself until he developed neuritis in his right arm. Sad day. He then decided to become a composer, and he studied at the Royal College of Music in London. And while he came out writing some great music, he didn't really make enough money doing that, so he earned the rest of his living being a trombonist. And he taught. In fact, Rafe Von Williams, who wrote the beautiful and famous Serenade to Music, and is a fantastically famous composer, and happened to be good friends with Holst, said he was a great teacher. For whatever that's worth. Holst had some pretty decent success as a composer, but international fame didn't really come until the premiere of The Planets, his most well-known work. The Planets were first performed in 1918, right after World War I, which can kind of explain their huge success because the world was looking for beauty after such a horrible, terrible event. The Planets is organized into seven movements, one for each planet in our solar system, exempting Earth. Because who really cares about Earth anyways? The movements are based on our ideas and emotions associated with the influence of the planets on Psyche, an idea that was given to Holtz by Clifford Bax. So essentially, this piece is based on our horoscopes. And they say only girls are into horoscopes. The movements go something like this. Mars, bringer of war. Venus, bringer of peace. Mercury, the winged messenger. This is winged. Go with it. Jupiter, the bringer of jollity. Jollity. Saturn, the bringer of old age. Womp womp. Uranus, the magician. And Neptune, the mystic. For those of you paying attention, yes, Mars is out of order. Hulse never really explained why he did that, and there are a bunch of theories, but the one I prefer is that perhaps with the end of the deadliest war in history, he wanted to get the war movement out of the way and just move forward. As amazing as the planets are, it's not actually a fair representation of the rest of his style. Here are some major elements of Holst's typical style. He placed a huge importance on folk song. This shows in his melodic sense, simplicity, and reluctance to be overexpressive. Many of his fans and contemporaries describe his style as being austere and cerebral. His good old friend Von Williams says, He was not afraid of being obvious when the occasion demanded, nor did he hesitate to be remote when remoteness expressed his purpose. Eh. Sweeping melodies which his daughter Imogen described as rising reassuringly over the steps of a descending bass. And Imogen is one of the coolest names ever. He liked to use unconventional time signatures. Do with that what you will. Another one he used is rising and falling scales. Something he liked to bring back from an earlier period was the ostinato, which is essentially a repeating phrase, and it's usually in a low voice. And the last one he's big for is using bitonality and polytonality. That's more theory stuff, and I'm not really going to go into that here, but if you want to learn more about it, here are a couple links from Chords Galore, and he teaches you a little bit more about it. So want to hear a random moment in Holst's life? During World War I, Holst really, really badly wanted to help out with the war effort, and he tried to enlist with his good old buddy Von Williams, but he was really upset to discover that he was declared unfit to serve due to that pesky old neuritis. His pride was even further challenged when his wife was able to be a volunteer ambulance driver. 
He brooded over his unhelpfulness until the war was about to end, when he was finally given the opportunity to help by going over to Europe and educating the British troops about music and to help with the demobilization. However, there was one catch. He was actually born with the name Gustav von Holst, and since that name sounded really German, people didn't think it would be appropriate for him to go and help with the demobilization after the war. So he actually got his name legally changed to just Holst instead of von Holst, and then he was able to go help out. Hey, you do what you gotta do. Change your name, change your face. In this case, it was just his name. Anyway, that's all for this week. I had a good time making this video. If you check out down below, I've placed a list of some other great Holst works and some links where you can listen to them. Announcement! From now on, my videos will be consistently updated on Tuesdays. So subscribe, and then you'll hear about when new videos are posted. Yay. Also guys, I'm a huge, huge fan of suggestions. I'm making these videos for you. I want to know what you want to learn about. So please send stuff my way and I will be sure to put it on the schedule. Bye! Musicology.